Ohio State, Michigan. I think a lot of you probably looked around, checked your phones, saw it on TV, web, wherever you get your news. This week, Jim Harbaugh was talking to Mike Tirico. Forget what show it was, but he was quoted. Let me go ahead and get the quote out of the way, and then I'll talk about the reaction. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This has already been beaten like a dead horse. We've got to beat Ohio State, Harbaugh said. Nothing makes us angrier than that, or me. That's what we're working toward every day. We've beaten anyone else, or we've beaten everyone else. How about that? That was a little bit of breaking news to me. We've beaten everyone else, but we haven't beat them. That's what we have to do, beat them. Win a championship, get ourselves into the playoff, win a national championship. All right, so now that sparked a whole bunch of reaction, not so much because that's interesting, but because no one thinks they have anything else to talk about. But then I read a few that went down this road. They went down the, let's talk about what else separates Ohio State and Michigan. There's a gap. Everyone can see that. There's a gap between the programs right now. What separates it? And then, I don't know how you guys did it. I couldn't get more than 50 words out of this before I came to a conclusion. But some of you guys wrote like a 1,000 words on explaining what separates Ohio State and Michigan. <clears throat> I'm going to try. Let's see how long I go here, Colin. Roster. That's one word. Roster, as far as I can tell, is what separates them. Now, what you can do is you can work backwards and say, well, how did we get to this gap in roster, gap in talent, gap in skill? And you can trace it from the roster to recruiting. And then you can retrace it from recruiting to, well, maybe our product and program's not attractive enough. And then you can backtrack from there and you can ask, okay, well, does that have something to do with who we hired as head coach? I don't know about that. Everyone was very excited when you hired Jim Harbaugh. Maybe, just maybe, Jim Harbaugh came to Ann Arbor and he had a successful formula. He understands the principles of winning, but maybe they need to be modernized. And maybe it took him a little while to understand, I need to modernize things. I think they've taken steps. I don't think that you can look at the hiring of Josh Gaddis and say, oh, there's just another Harbaugh hire. No, you may not like Josh Gaddis, or you may not fully believe he's the answer, and I'm not here to tell you that I just fully believe Josh Gaddis is going to be the savior for Michigan football. Maybe he will be, but at least it's an attempt by Jim Harbaugh to take a step in a more modernized direction. He's not an idiot. He's not a fool. He sees the product on the field and knows more about his roster than you do. Here's what I've been talking about with Michigan. What I talked about the other day, what I talked about on the Lake Kick Extra podcast was when I look at the roster, and I look at Ohio State's roster, and I look at how seamlessly Ohio State and Ryan Day and before him Urban Meyer have been able to sell their product and sell their brand to the elite perimeter skill type guys. I don't care if you go to the DMV or work your way down the eastern seaboard, get into South Florida because they've been able to do that. They can go into Texas and get DB and wide receiver talent. Mainly I'm talking wide receiver talent. And they can go to California and do it too. I don't think Michigan can. Michigan hasn't done it to the degree. Let's just say that. There may be anecdotal exceptions. They haven't done it to the degree that the Buckeyes have been able to do it. And the reason is because the product hasn't been attractive enough. Believe it or not, I'm from the South, guys. I'm still in the South right now, relatively speaking. In Nashville, I grew up south of here. Kids want to go play for Michigan. A lot of kids look for a reason. Give me a reason to go up north and play for Michigan. The reason hasn't been there. At some point, it becomes a business decision for a lot of kids. But this is, going back to this, this is why I believe Josh Gaddis, you can make the argument he's one of the most important people in college football this year. Last year was what it was. Very few times do you see like a Joe Brady walk in the door and one personnel change or one coaching staff change just atom bomb. Entire thing turns upside down. We turn the sport right on its ear. Rarely does that happen. Most of the time, you got to get a couple of years in. So now Josh Gaddis will be just that, a couple of years in. And I start looking around. And I know erroneously I said last week that J.J. McCarthy, the five-star committed quarterback for the Wolverines right now, was from New Jersey. I don't know why I said it. I said it, though. I know he's from Illinois. But I did not have Colin edit it out of the video. I deserve the roasting that you gave me. And give it to me, you did. So Illinois five-star quarterback. Well, high school quarterback. Transferring to IMG, possibly. Let's keep an eye on that. J.J. McCarthy committed to Michigan. Regardless of where he plays out his high school days, I think he's going to Michigan. So you've got him. And then I had a question the other day in the inbox. Christian Dixon, Xavier Worthy. These are guys that Michigan's in it for. These are California wide receiver products. But still, same message. That's the kind of kid I want to see Michigan involved for. That's the kind of kid I want to see Michigan landing. And 
if Josh Gaddis and the Michigan offense shows marked improvement this year before you even get the five-star quarterback in there, then all of a sudden that gives me a reason for optimism. But this is not the NFL. You don't get punished for your success. You get rewarded for your success in college. Let's talk about Ohio State now. I told you I just had a few different directions I wanted to go. The problem for Michigan and the problem for any major program or program period that allows a little bit of distance to form between themselves and the competition, in this case, yourself and your arch rival, is Ohio State's not slowing down. They got the right guy at the helm. They had the right guy in Urban Meyer. They still do have the right guy at the helm in Ryan Day. Ryan Day understands big picture. And I want to be respectful here, but I'm going to tell you, inside this rivalry, you guys care about Ohio State and Michigan, Michigan, Ohio State. You don't say the other's name. That's great. Love it. That's the fabric of college football. But let me speak as an outsider. I didn't grow up in this rivalry. So let me speak to as an outsider to you briefly about how someone in, for instance, Nashville, Tennessee, or Houston, Texas, or Phoenix, Arizona, looks at this and looks at Ohio State. People outside this rivalry do not look at Michigan as the biggest obstacle for Ohio State right now. To be honest with you, I don't either. I hope it changes for your sake, but I'm just being real with you. When I look at Ohio State right now, I measure them against Alabama. I measure them against Clemson. I measure them against Georgia. Even though the Bulldogs haven't won a championship, I'm talking about people who recruit at the head table. Uh, LSU is at this table now. Those are the programs I compare Ohio State to. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because you could have one of two mentalities if you were Ryan Day. Dabo Swinney's done the same thing at Clemson. You could have one of two mentalities. You could look around your immediate surroundings in the ACC for Clemson or the Big Ten for Ohio State, and you could say, look at this huge gap, man. We're out to a huge lead. And you could coast. And you'd never compete on the national level. But, hey, you'd run your block. You'd run your conference block for a little while. Ryan Day's not done that. Ryan Day understands. In fact, this little experience that the Buckeyes just had out in the Fiesta Bowl in the desert with Clemson when they built the lead and couldn't put it away, I think it lit a fire under them a whole lot more than anything that's going on in Ann Arbor, Michigan right now. So here's the problem. This program, this Ohio State program, they are number one by a wide margin in the Big Ten. They're not sitting still. See, when you talk about what we're going to do at Michigan and you talk about the steps we're going to take and we got a five-star quarterback coming in and we've got the hopefully the right offensive coordinator and now let's start sprinkling in some elite talent, that's great and that's on the right path. But you're focused on that and then you look back up and Ohio State's another mile down the road from where they were the last time you saw them and you say, they're not sitting still, man. They're still speeding up. How dare them? That's the name of the game in college football. You don't develop that gap overnight and you don't close that gap overnight. But this rivalry right now is a perfect snapshot of the decisions that have been made on both sides of this rivalry. It, if you go back to 2010 and you think about the mess, I know a lot of outsiders may, under, may have to think back, 2010, what was that? 2010, what was that? Well, the 2010 season for Ohio State was when all the tattoo scandal broke out. You don't really think about it all that much these days, do you? Buckeye fans may, but I don't think a lot of people outside of Columbus think about it, and it's because they made sound decisions, and they made the right decisions. They, Luke Fickle stepped in, and they swallowed it for a year, but then they hired a guy by the name of Urban Meyer, and everything was rectified, and they were once again one of the very top programs in America, and then not only did they rectify things and stable the ship, and they were right back in the mix, they had the right guy already in-house to take over when Urban Meyer left. And that's Ryan Day. And I was looking the other day, I told you, again, hodgepodge of thoughts here. I think it was CBS Sports put out their head coaching rankings. I, I don't do this, period. But when I think about a hierarchy of head coaches, I think about it differently. I don't need to see your resume. I need to know what I would expect from you moving forward the next five years. And the bottom line is, you could be a rookie head coach and be the number one coach in America over the next five years, for all I know. Well, a lot of people are hesitant. Ryan Day had a good first year as head coach at Ohio State, but they've been hesitant. Don't know why, but they've been hesitant to put him in a top five. I'll put him there right now. I have no qualms about it. Ryan Day, what's, what box has he not checked? Because all you're going to tell me is, well, he hasn't stacked up the years. Well, what are you doing? Are you doing inventory of the last five years? Or are you trying to tell me what's going to happen the next five years? Look at Ohio State. Where is there any indication that they're going to be worse than 10 and 2 any year over the next five years? Where is there any indication they're not going to have a roster littered 
with future NFL players? Where is there any indication their coaching staff is going to be anything less than elite? And where is there any indication this head coach is going anywhere? There's none. They've made good decisions. They're set up for the long run. Michigan also is a perfect example right now, and they are a perfect product of their past decision making. You had Lloyd Carr in there for a while, and they were a solid program. I don't need to remind anyone in Ann Arbor where this goes. It goes quickly off the rails. I got Michigan buddies who still get worked up when they talk about who didn't get hired and then who did get hired, and that, of course, was Rich Rodriguez. Guy had no chance to succeed there. He had the wrong people not on his side. I'm sorry if that's a double negative, but it is reality. I can promise you that. Then you got Brady Hoax next. Didn't exactly light the world on fire. And now we hire Jim Harbaugh, but we get a Jim Harbaugh that's been successful, but probably is very slow to modernize his offensive approach. And that is where we are right now. Michigan's not bad. That's not what we're asking of Michigan. We're asking them if they're going to compete with Ohio State and they're going to be the best in the Big Ten, they can't just be good. You know, a lot of ways, Michigan's in the same boat Florida's been in. Florida's probably a tick better as a program right now, but Florida's in a position right now. They're not 4-8. and eight. They're not even 8-4. and four. They're a good program. They, Florida, have gone back-to-back -back New Year's Six Bowls, at least back-to-back. -back. They're really good, but they've got to overcome Georgia. And Michigan is a really good program. I was in Orlando on New Year's Day. I was watching them play Alabama. I wasn't watching them play UAB somewhere. All due respect to Bill Clark and the boys. Michigan's not a bad program, but that's not what we're expecting from Michigan. We're asking how do they get to the top of the mountain. And to get to the top of the mountain, you got to make good decisions. you got to make them for a while. But most importantly, offense has got to evolve. And I don't think that that's a unique question. We ask that and demand that of a lot of programs. I just think Michigan actually has the wherewithal and the resources to get it done. It's the everlasting will they get it done. And so far they haven't, but that doesn't mean they haven't already taken the right steps. It could be that Josh Gaddis was the absolute right hire, and it just takes two or three years to produce and yield the fruit that eventually they'll yield. We'll see. Um, you know, as I said, being an outsider, I pull for a more competitive Big Ten, just as I pull for a more competitive ACC. I'm spoiled because I got to grow up covering the SEC and watching the SEC, so you never really had that down here. I mean, you've had a few years where the East was down or maybe the West was down, but by and large, it's been very competitive. So that's what I'm used to. I would love to see that everywhere.